1998, my husband and I made a trip to Europe. It was our very first time out of the country. He wanted to go to our Oktoberfest in Munich. So we get there, it's our very first day. We're super jet lagged. We don't speak German. We don't know what's going on. Oktoberfest is gigantic. It's like Summerfest on acid. It's huge, just huge. So we're, we make our way to a tent, the spot and tent, and we walk in, and there's a band blaring. It's screaming, Alice, Alice, who the F is Alice? And there's German girls with dirndls on, slinging these big, giant glass mugs of beer around. We're so overwhelmed, we have no idea what to do. And we realized that you cannot just walk up to a bar and get a beer. You actually have to be sitting at a table because nobody wants you carrying these giant liter mugs of beer around, right? <laughs> so, but all the tables are reserved and the couple of tables that aren't reserved are packed with people. We don't know what to do. My husband says to me, don't worry, I've got this baby. <laughs> I go, oh, okay. And he makes a beeline over to this table where there's a couple seats open. It says reserved, but there's a couple seats open. I'm like, no, 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 that's reserved. He says, no, I got this. And he goes and he says to these bikers, they were bikers. At least they appeared to be bikers. They were bikers. They had Harley gear on, right? And he walks up to them and says, hey, we're from Milwaukee. And my husband happened to be wearing an anniversary shirt himself. Now, this is probably the part where I should tell you that although while I come from a long, like, uh, long line of motorcycle enthusiasts, you know, my dad had one, my grandpa had one, my son has one, my brother has one, everybody has one. I had a bunch of cousins that worked at Harley. My husband does not. <laughs> But we sit out and he says to them, can we, he, you know, the spot's reserved, but can we just sit down for one beer? Just one beer and then we'll leave, right? The guy says, oh, okay, have a seat. So they start talking. We can't really talk to them, but we're trying. And so we try to introduce ourselves and the guy who appeared to be the boss said his name was Mike. And I asked what his girlfriend's name was and I thought she said Peggy. And I said, oh, like Margaret? And Mike says, no, like Schwein. <laughs> oh, okay. So after I downed a mug of beer and they decided we could stay longer, that their friends might not show up, I decided I really needed to go to the restroom. Well, I'd never been to Europe before and the whole restroom situation is different. Like you have to pay to get in. You have to put a coin in there. We just got there, we didn't have any money. So I go back and I ask the women at the table to help me out with this restroom thing. You know, I'm gesturing. <laughs> so they grab me up and they swoop me into the women's room and they're showing me their tattoos. This woman is showing me, she's got this giant bird of paradise all the way up her leg and they want to see mine. They're like, I don't have any. <laughs> Anyway, we have a long, lovely afternoon, well into evening with Mike and Piggy and the rest of the crew. And as we're getting ready to depart, um, my husband says, hey, you should come to our house for the 100th anniversary. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. So he writes her address on a piece of paper, you know, because we're so grateful that they let us hang out with them. And we go back, miraculously, we find our hotel room in spite of the horrible condition we are when, when we leave this place. But our, our, the rest of our trip is great. We get home, that was 1998. 2003 rolls around, it's the 100th anniversary, and we go, oh yeah, remember Mike and Piggy? And in the meantime, we'd moved. We'd moved, remember Mike and Piggy? A week before the 100th anniversary, <laughs> we get a letter in the mail that had been forwarded on a slow boat from our old house, which was only a few blocks away, oddly enough. 
that arrived at our house about a week before the 100th anniversary. We looked at it and it's, you know, it, it was from Mike and it was like, excuse me, my English isn't good. And he must've tried really hard to write this letter. But we were so embarrassed because we didn't really want them ever to find out that we weren't bikers in the first place. <laughs> so the letter went in the fireplace and we just tried to pretend we never got it. <laughs> I know, I regret it. Too late now. That's my story, thank you.